Now, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Real Estate Talk Show. And of course, we have here with us our legal expert, Mark Wiseletter. And we have some great topics that we're discussing. And the next one is referring to six things to become a successful landlord. So what do you mean by that? First one you're saying is you want to qualify your tenants. Yes, we're talking about residential. You know, you want to pick up a tenant. So the most important thing is to properly qualify your tenant, you know, and uh, check their references, credit checks. Uh, People always ask me, how do I find out if the tenant has a pet? Go on Facebook. (laughs) If they have a pet, there'll be a picture of them on Facebook. Isn't that such a brilliant tip? If you're worried about uh, pets, go on Facebook. You know, go on YouTube. If they ride in a shopping cart down a hill into a tree, you really don't want them on your property (laughs) as a tenant. So check them out a little bit on social media. But another great advantage, Aaron, is, you know, when there's a credit challenge tenant, it's it's now possible to actually take upfront rent in advance if you properly word it in your lease. So if the so tenant that changes to the legislation now, Mark? Yes. There was a great case which basically said as long as the tenant offers upfront rent, you can take three, six, a year's rent in advance. So you've got to be very careful to make sure the language in your lease, uh, and that's one, why one of the reasons people pick up my own lease with clauses because it has that, uh, but it says that. You've got to make sure the tenant is offering the upfront rent and the landlord's accepting it. If you make it a requirement, you're going to have to give it back. Yeah, no, there, there'll be problems. And that's one there. word, yeah. I mean, think about it. If you just were right, tenant agrees or the tenant offers, one word, huge difference. And you have this already for people. You have Yes, I have documents. a guide for Ontario landlords. It's available on my website, but uh, uh, people find this extremely helpful. There's a lot of tips in there that landlords can use. All right. Well, Simon, you preached about this number two point here, which Absolutely. is treat your tenants well, right? Well, I mean, it's, it's a customer service question, isn't it? You know, uh, it's also common sense. You know, we're nearing the holidays. You give the tenant a Christmas present. You give them some a great landlords. I know they give a, a Tim Hortons $10 gift card every month if the rent is paid on time. Not only is the rent paid on time, the tenant looks after the place better. When you appreciate a tenant, remember, they're, they're managing your investment. They're going to treat your property better, and that's going to earn you more money in the future. All That's right. a great idea. Ten bucks every month. I love it. <laughs> of course, the third point, which is a super one, is be flexible, especially with difficult situations. And Simon preaches about this all the time. I mean, he'll say that in some instances, if there's an issue on closing or once the property's closed, he himself and, and let's say the other agent, they work together if something happens after the fact. I mean, it's just easier. You just want to avoid the legal road mm-hmm. as right. much as possible. You know, lots of times a tenant loses their job. They can't pay rent. They want to pay rent. They can't pay rent rather than go to war. What I say is be flexible, go see the tenant, make a deal. Say to the tenant, you know what, if you'll agree to leave now, I'll give you a couple of months free rent, I'll help you move in with a relative, you'll avoid a war, you'll avoid damage to your place, and you can write off the loss. That's the way to do it instead of getting into a fight. And you got to get it in writing. Oh, yeah. And of course, you've got to get in right. Of yeah. course. And you've got to get uh, it in right. I'll help you out with the legal stuff here. All right. Okay. A uh, couple of important points before we go to break. Um, visit your property at least two times a year. Yeah. You know, if, just because the tenant is paying the rent on time, you really want to find out there was a grow house in there and there was, you know, and a, a lot of damage to your place. So you've got to get into your place at least two times a year. You're allowed to do it by giving 24 hours notice. You've got to get in to make sure that the tenant is properly maintaining your property. You know, what we recommend people do is go and, and I'm putting my fingers up in the air and check the smoke alarm for batteries. That's the perfect and, excuse and, and to we, get it. To and, do we, it. <laughs> and we do that and we do that every quarter. And that's when you drop off the gift card. So you can, you know, you can also be efficient with your time. Absolutely. And you, and you sort of, Great and, idea. And, and absolutely, you need to know what's going on. For sure. And how about tenants when there's two of them? You're saying here not to take a side. You know, that's the biggest problem. You have two tenants, they're both paying rent and they hate each other. So they're both <laughs> complaining to you. And now what do you do? You want them to get along. You know, the main thing is, is help them. Don't take sides. Try to bring in a third party, a mediator and help them to work it out between themselves. There are some even private mediation services that are free in the city that you can look up, but that's the key is help them to work it out. Don't take sides, don't go to war. Great information as always, but I just want to remind everyone as well, use the updated, use the correct contracts and Google doesn't have that. You know, I've seen people go onto Google and find leases that are valid in Florida or Utah, but have nothing to do with <laughs> Ontario. So you gotta use the current contracts, you gotta use the current forms for uh, no, for notices to vacate, termination of tenancies. I mean, you know what I'm I'll talking about. I'll give you about. something. If you use them, some of those old forms, they don't have, as an example, the address for service of the landlord. If you don't have in your lease the 
service address for the landlord, and then you serve an eviction notice and get into court five months later, then you just throw it out mm. because your lease was no good to begin with. That's why it's so important to have the proper paperwork right from the start. Oh, Mark Weisletter, you are just awesome. Thank you, Aaron. That's it's the so cover good of a to book. see you. <laughs> you are, Mark Weisletter, you are just awesome. Yeah. On bookshelves now. <laughs> On bookshelves now. We, we, you just have to write the book. Mark, great as always. We've got to have you back. Um, Thank and, you. And again, yeah. to reach out to Mark for any legal questions, uh, he provide real estate law services. Go to realestatetalkshow.ca. Uh, look for Mark on our site. Ask a question. We'll get, we'll get you to him. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. Thank you. See you soon.